but obviously, obviously there had to be a time in which oil would run out. And if there's a time in which oil will run out, there has to be a time when you've reached your maximum ability to produce oil. Well, the chart that I have here shows what happened. He made that prediction here in 1956. We were here. He said in 1970, that's the peak up there, that we would reach our maximum oil production. This chart shows where that oil was coming from from Texas, from the rest of the United States, from natural gas, liquids. And then we made two big oil discoveries. He hadn't included Alaska, and he hadn't included the Gulf of Mexico. You can see Alaska there, just a little blip in the slide down the other side of Hubbard's Peak. And there you could see the fabled Gulf of Mexico in yellow there, the fabled Gulf of Mexico oil discoveries. It hardly made a difference, did it? The United States now produces about half the oil that it produced in 1970. And that's in spite of the fact of finding oil that M. King Hubbard did not include in his prediction. He included the lower 48. He did not include Alaska. He did not include the Gulf of Mexico. But in spite of finding a fair amount of oil there, today we still produce half the oil we did in 1970. Now, by 1980, if you look on the charts, by 1980, you could look back and you would say, gee, M. King Hubbard was right, wasn't he? The United States did reach its maximum oil production 10 years ago. Wow. What that means, of course, is that won't the world sometime reach its maximum oil production? How could you argue that the United States is not a microcosm of the world. If the United States reached its maximum oil production in 1970, when would the world reach its maximum oil production? As a matter of fact, M. King Hubbard predicted that the world would be reaching its maximum oil production just about now. Well, if M. King Hubbard's speech was the most important speech of the last century, one might ask the question, what was the most insightful speech of the last century? Now, I don't know if these two men even knew each other. I don't know if Hyman Rickover, who I think gave the most insightful speech of the last century, don't know if he even knew that uh, M. King Hubbard existed. He was going to talk about the same phenomenon from a very different uh, perspective. His speech was given the 15th day of May, just a little over a year later in 1957. The audience was irrelevant, but the audience was a group of physicians in St. Paul, Minnesota. For many years, um, his speech was lost. And just a few years ago, it was found, and it's on the internet now. And if you'll just Google for uh, Rick Over and energy speech, it will come up. And I'm sure that um, you will agree that it is probably the most prophetic speech that you have ever read. I'm sure you will agree that it might very well be the most insightful speech of the last century. I have some quotes here from uh, Hyman Rickover's speech. Uh, and you know, I'm sure that speech was still around in 1900, 1980 when you could look back and see, gee, in 1970, um, we really did peak in oil production in this country, didn't we? And, uh, you know, looking at what, what Hyman Rickover said, there really should have been some pause, shouldn't there? There's nothing man can do to rebuild exhausted fossil fuel reserves. They were created by solar energy. Oh, it's really interesting. Almost all the energy we use today came, came from or comes from the sun. It was the sun that made the plants and so forth grow that produced our gas and oil. It's the uh, sun that, uh, with, with differential heating, makes the uh, winds blow. It's the sun that lifts the water and uh, the clouds then drop it on the mountains. It runs down to produce hydroelectric power. No wonder the, uh, many of the ancients worshipped the sun. They kind of understood how important it was to their, uh, to their economy, didn't they? They were created by solar energy 500 million years ago and took eons to grow to their present volume. 
In the face of the basic fact that fossil fuel reserves are finite, the exact length of time these reserves will last is important in only one respect. Wow, what a profound statement.